Let's do a little bit more challenging problems that involve the sum and difference of cubes. So remember, what does my broken record say all the time? That is to take the greatest common factor out first. So please, some of these problems have that going on. So don't try to make this into the difference of cubes. This has got to be a multiple of 3, and it's not. Plus, I can't take the cube root of 2. Oh, look, 2 and 128 are even numbers. So the number 2 can come over out of those, and so can a single letter y, because this one's got a y to the first. So let's factor a 2y out of both of these terms. Don't do anything more than that. And then you'll need a y cubed here, and then 2 times 64 is 128, and you've got your y covered. That then gives you the difference of cubes, where y is the value you're going to put in for A, and 4 is the number you're going to put in for B into our memorized formula that says to take Y minus B, Y minus 4, times that Y value squared, and then this has to be a plus sign. These two multiply together, 4 times Y, and then finally that B value, which is a 4 squared, which in our case then will be a 16. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that and call that 16. Don't forget to bring down your greatest common factor, and you've finished the problem. Okay, number 6. These are multiples of 3. That means they are perfect cubes. So what I'm going to ask you now is t to what power? That's a question mark. If you cubed this, would give you a 6. And remember, the shortcut for raising a power to a power is to multiply these two exponents. So what number does this have to be if you multiply it by 3 to get a 6? Of course, it's got to be a 2. So this will be t squared is what gets raised to the third power to give you t to the sixth. And then the cube root of 64 is still a 4. And this will be y squared that you have to cube in order to get y to the sixth. Therefore, in this problem, my a value will be represented by a t to the second power, and my b value will be represented by 4y squared. Those are the expressions that I cube and put into my plus formula that's got a, a, a plus sign here. So it's my a value plus my b value, t squared plus 4 y squared. Be careful now. It's my a value squared. So t squared squared is going to be t to the fourth. Then it's my a value times my b value. And always a plus sign here at the end. And that's going to be my b value, which is 4y squared, squared. So be careful. Let's write this all out again. So we have t to the second plus 4y to the second. Nothing to be done with that. t to the second raised to the second is t to the fourth because 2 times 2 is 4. When I put this all together, I'm going to put the 4 in front and then the t squared, y squared. And then 4y squared times 4y squared is 16y to the fourth power. Have I mentioned yet that this will not be factorable. You will not be able to find two numbers whose product is 16 and adds to be 4 in order to factor this trinomial. Um, so, you know, typically you're done un unless somehow we ad end up with a difference of squares there or something. Oh my, getting a little bit harder yet. So number 7. Let's take the greatest common factor of 2 out first. Then I'll have x to the 3a. Here I'll have an 8 y to the 3b. So I got the 2 out. That's good. So x to what power will be cubed in order to get x to the 3a? And remember, these have to be multiplied together. So doesn't that make sense that that exponent has to be an a, x to the a? Because when you multiply it by 3, you get this 3b. 3a, I'm sorry. Uh, the cube root of 8 is 2. And here also, you have to raise y to the b power so that when you cube it, you know, 2 to the third is 8. y to the b raised to the third, shortcut is to multiply these together, 
giving you 3B. So for my capital letter A, I'm going to use X to the A. And for my capital letter B in my memorized formula, I'm going to use 2Y to the B power. So in my binomial, those two terms, X to the A plus 2Y to the B power, then that X to the A has to be, that's supposed to be an A, I'm going to kind of cut that off a little bit, it has to be squared. Then this is going to be the opposite sign. This was a plus sign. You know, see these two? It's a product of those two. So I'm just going to put the two in front, X to the A, Y to the B. And then finally, this is always positive. And in this case, it's 2Y to the B power. And that has to be squared. So finally, I'm going to move this over a little. X to the A plus 2 y to the b. Now right here, when you x to the a raised to the second power, you multiply those exponents. So a times 2 is 2a. This minus 2 x to the a, y to the b, I don't have to do anything. And 2yb to the second power, the 2 has to be squared, that will be a 4. And to raise y to the b to the second power, you multiply those two. a times b I'm sorry, B times 2 is 2B, and I am done. Okay, let's look at this one. So, you know, this right here is A. A is going to be represented by X plus 5. And this right here is B because it's B to the third power. So capital letter B is going to be Y minus 5. Oh, boy. So... Um, hopefully you've gotten some notes from this, and if you haven't caught up, hit pause and copy this down, because I'm now going to erase some of this, taking up too much space. And so, in my binomial, if you will, that's going to turn out to be really big, I have my a value, x plus 5, plus sign right here, plus my b value, y minus 5. Then, I have my a value, which is a binomial, x plus 5 squared, then minus my a value, x plus 5 times my b value, y minus 5, which I'll have to FOIL. And then finally, plus, this is always a plus, my b, b value squared. Oh my. There's a lot of work that goes into this, and I'm not sure I really want to take the time um, in doing the video here. Look at these. They cancel out. So I will have an X plus a Y. I'm going to kind of just give you a tip on this. This X plus 5 squared, you're going to have to do X plus 5 times X plus 5 and FOIL it. That right there will turn out to be X squared plus 5X plus 5X, which is plus 10X plus 25. This right here is going to be minus, I'm going to go ahead and keep this in parentheses, x plus 5 times x times y minus 5 is going to be x y minus 5 x plus 5 y minus 25 and all those signs will have to be changed and then y minus 5 times y minus 5, I'm just going to tell you, it's going to be y squared minus 10y plus 25. When you clean all these terms up, I have, I'm just going to copy down what I have. I have x squared plus 15x. That's probably got to be with this 10x and this minus 5x. That's going to become positive 5x. Then 75 then minus 15y and plus, hopefully I'm not missing anything, plus y squared minus xy. Who I hope I got everything up in front. This x plus y has to be brought down. So I didn't clean this up in person on this video because I want to keep moving with some hard problems, but you might do that yourself. Let's see, number nine. I see a greatest common factor of an eight to come out of this. So that'll give me an s to the ninth power here, minus 8. Okay, this is the difference of cubes. So s to what power right here? When you cube it, so remember you have to multiply these two to get that. So it looks like that's got to be s to the third power. Cubed will give you s to the ninth, and the cubed root of 8 is the number 2. 
So my A value is S cubed. My B value is the number 2. So I will just have S cubed minus 2. Then that S cubed has to be squared. The sign needs to be the opposite. 2 and S cubed are my A and B values. Don't worry about that sign. It's just that B is 2, A is S cubed. This one's always positive. My B value is the 2. I have to square it. That needs to be turned into a 4. S to the 3rd raised to the 2nd power will be called S to the 6th plus 2S cubed plus 4. Bring down your S cubed minus 2 and I believe we pulled an 8 out of this problem way at the beginning and there is our factored form. Finally one more. Gee, see this 5 and see that 5? It would be best if you would take a 5 out of each of these terms. Because you could have a 1 over 8 here. If you distributed 5 times 1 8, you'd get 5 8. We've done something with 1 8 already, 1 over 8. So let's talk about our a and b values. x is cubed here, so I'm going to have x in my parentheses y squared because when I cube that, x will be to the third and y will be to the sixth. Remember that the cube root of 1 is 1, the cube root of 8 is 2, so I'm going to put 1 half in for my a and b value. So for this problem right here, a is the x, y squared, and b is the 1 half. That's what I'm putting into my formula. I'm going to put a little line here separating. So I have my a value, xy squared, minus my b value. Ooh, be careful. The xy squared has got to be squared. This will have to be the opposite sign. It's the product of these two. So I'm just going to put the 1 half in front of the xy squared. And then finally, the fraction 1 half has to be squared and called 1 fourth. Right here, x to the second power is x squared y to the second raised to the second is y to the fourth plus the one half xy squared. One half times one half is one quarter. I'm going to bring down the xy squared minus the one half and I can't forget that five that I took out to begin with. I need to tell you that this video segment that I just did is really upper level factoring questions. I'm not going to be putting these really challenging factoring problems on a test. I'm going to be giving you a take home quiz that you will do over factoring and it will have some of these challenging problems so you'll be able to go back to these videos and review some of these crazy crazy hard problems in case I put just a few on that take home quiz um, that will help you with the factoring problems. We're going to move on to what I call the next chapter in chapter 6. We're going to use our factoring skills to simplify fractions and solve equations that involve fractions.